Hi, I use a hands-on, tactile, not workbook-based, games-based math curriculum. It's called Right Start Math, and I'd love to share with you more about this curriculum. Hi, I'm Ashley. Welcome to my channel, Joyful Noise Living. I am a homeschool mom of three, and I started this channel because I don't have a big budget for homeschooling. So I like to look and research and find the most affordable way that I can homeschool my kids. Um, I like to look at different curriculums, different free options, and I would love to share these resources here with you on this channel. So if you would like to hear more of that, please consider subscribing. I'm glad you're watching. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. So about Right Start Math. I found Right Start Math when my oldest was uh, kindergartner and we first started with using Singapore math which is a total workbook based curriculum and I heard good things about it I had some friends that were using it and we tried it but especially with a kindergartner like who would not sit still for a very long time who had a very short attention span and who loved touching things and feeling things it was not the best fit for us so kindergarten math was not that great for us. So I started doing research to find something that would more fit her style. And I stumbled upon Right Start Math. And I had never heard of this before. You know, I knew Saxon, I knew Singapore, I knew Abeka, I knew, um, there's a few, oh, Matthew C. I was really looking into Matthew C, but I still wasn't sure about that one. But Right Start Math came up. But the more I read about it, I realized this is a different kind of curriculum. It's not it's not a book where you open it up and start filling in all the answers and then and then you're done. It's not that kind of thing, but it really caught my eye and it caught my attention and I thought I need to look into this more. So I'm gonna turn this camera around. I'm going to show you a peek at what's inside these books. I'm gonna show you the manipulatives that we use. Then I'll talk to you about how we use this in our family. And then I'll share with you my final thoughts about the curriculum at the end of this video. So here we go. This is where it gets fun. Oh, ah, here's my books. Here's the abacus. All right, there's so much here. I know, I know, there's a lot here. There's even more, I didn't even get it all out, but this is the main stuff that I'm using right now for these two levels. And let me say right away that I was saying this is not a workbook based curriculum, but they do have a workbook. This is your workbook that it comes with. They call it, that's the worksheets basically, but they call it like a math journal. So you've got some tracing patterns here. You've got, these are really cool to learn. That, um, some of the uh, addition facts, the whole part summary. As you can see, there are, this is about as far as we are, so we haven't done the rest. But as you can see, there are worksheets to practice some things, but this is not, this is about every five or so lessons that you get one of these. So that comes with um, each level. So we'll start with level A, and I would say this is very close to a kindergarten slash first grade curriculum. So I would use it with your four, five, or six year old. This shows you what they're going to be doing in this level, in which quarter. Um, this, uh, this is what I, uh, what I think you should check out, um, how they teach mathematics. So this was really interesting. Um, just to leave, okay, here we go, here's the lessons. Um, most of these lessons actually, are covered in the B book as well. So what you could do with that, if your, your child will go through A book first and then you jump into B book, um, it would be good review for them if they needed a good review of the concepts, or it's really good if you started in B book and did not do book A. So what I am doing is my, my oldest started this book in first grade, so I recommend the B book for your six, seven, or eight year old but she started at the beginning of the book, so she didn't know any of the, the methods that, that Right Start had um, introduced yet in book A. So she started at the beginning of B, and we learned all of those, those ways to use the abacus and whatnot, and then it went into the harder stuff for her to learn. With my son, he started in book A, and we're about halfway through, but um, since these are so similar to book B, I will have him either use the review or skip that whole section where they review what was in here. So that's how that works. All right, so let's look at a lesson. So I know Right Start Math really discourages counting on the fingers. 
and they start with um, songs uh, like one, two, buckle my shoe. And this is to teach them like the odd and even numbers or counting, skip counting, because they're gonna get used to doing two, four, six, and eight. I like how they have songs. It comes with a CD as well with one of their songs and how to add uh, the fives. Okay, so they're learning how to make seven is five and two is what they're learning. Five and two here. And here's the song, yellow is the sun. So they're practicing addition just by singing a simple little song. So my, my five-year-old knows this and he can add very well these, um, these math facts. Um, so we're using tally sticks to practice that. And we use the abacus. So the abacus is fairly and fairly old concept, but we have loved it. It has helped so much as they learn. It's very visual. So they learn to they learn to look at these beads and see five beads right away, and see four beads right away, and that's where the cards come in. So they practice with these, learning to see ten beads just by looking at it. So that way, that's why we learn five and two, five, seven is five and two. Nine is five and four. So my son, he can look at these and say nine, eight, oops, eight, six, four. You know, he can just look at these and say that because he's been practicing these bead cards. Plus he's learned that this is five. So he knows when the color changes that it's not five anymore, that this would be five and one. So it helps you vis your brain visually see, oh, five and one and then Five and five is 10. And then we start counting by tens. Two, 10, three, 10, four, 10, et cetera. Cool, I've really enjoyed it. My kids love it. They like to make stairs out of it. See, and it's very tactile. You can just touch it, you can feel it. Um, and it's visual, it's hands-on. It's very, very good for young learners. So let's go back to the cards. Some of these uh, cards we come with are the bead cards. You have the finger cards and you have the tally stick cards. My daughter did not need the tally stick and the finger cards as much because she was a little bit older. Uh, my son, I go ahead and use them a little bit and you do matching games with these so they can learn what those numbers look like without counting on their fingers. Okay, then we have the numeral, the number cards and these are used to play things like Go Fish, uh, War, Addition War is one of our favorite games. Um, it's where you have, you, everybody pulls out two cards and whoever has the highest number of those two cards wins the packet. So like this person has, oh, what's seven and two? It's nine. This person is eight and zero. Oh, it's eight. Look, this person won. Yay. So that's how you would play that game. So that's another game we play to practice math facts. They're doing addition, but they don't even know it. Like they're not even like thinking they're doing addition. Here you have a money deck. And this is what my daughter has been using quite a bit lately. So it's, um, you have the pennies and the nickels and the dimes all on the card deck. And you can use them for um, basic money counting practice, or they have a little game like Money War. It's the same as the Number War, but you do it with the coin cards. And we played that the other day and it went pretty well. So there's that game. Also, when you start getting into um, learning to count, uh, learning the digits and learning the tens, we have the digit cards. Place value, sorry, I keep calling them digits. Place value cards. So the kids learn to identify the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. And then this, see, these just lay right on top of each other here. Whoop, so what number is this? All right, 1,293, or 9103. So you play games with those as well. Also is these base 10 cards, these are so cool. But I think these are a lot like, if you've seen, Math lessons for living education. They use the hundreds houses, and this is basically just the same thing like that. But um, so you have here the the ones cards, the tens cards. So you see how there's ten ones in here, the hundreds cards, and then the thousands cards. So it doesn't go beyond that, unfortunately. But um, I think you have to make more. But um, those have been really great for my daughter to learn the place value and. It, and then you just add them up like, okay, this number would be, what would this number be, ladies and gentlemen? 2,322. Over here we have skip counting. We've been working on the eights and nines. This is a deck of cards just like the number cards, but it only has multiples of eight in this packet and multiples of nine in this packet. 
So when we pull them out, we play a matching game. So you set them all out. You set them all out in a grid, upside down. And then one person is looking for the eights, and one, the other person is looking for the multiples of nine. And then you have to do it in order as well. So my daughter had to find the eight, then the 16, and I was looking for the nine, then the 18, and so on and so forth. So that was our way. Sometimes we don't even do the game, and I just lay out the cards in mixed order, and I say, put this in order, and we put them in order. So that way it's a little quicker game, and it's not, it doesn't take as long as a matching game does. But that one is fun as well. Then we have time, and this little clock came with it. And I think this comes with the Saxon math as well, but uh, we've used this to work on time concepts. And we made some clock cards here, and then they come with their matching time here. So there's a clock game there. Uh, let me show you a lesson in the B book. As you can see, it's not very flashy, it's very black and white, but again, these are for the teachers only, or the moms to only look at, and not necessarily for the students. So you, you read down the line and you go through the, them. This is basically your script. This is uh, good with that. It basically says, say to the child or play this, it tells you what to do. So for example, here is your objective for this lesson. Here's all the materials you need. So when I do the lesson, I look, glance at these things and I run to my little bin where I have all my materials, grab what I need, and then we go and sit down. So this tells me all that I need. So then you have a warm up. So this one is play a mixture of the comes before game and comes after game with the days, months, and numbers and alphabet. Ooh, that's a lot to cover. Ask for one plus seven, one plus five, and so on. So there's that warm up there getting them to be thinking. Then look for the activities. They have a game today. Play the can you find game from lesson 26. So I basically, for that game, you set out all the place value, or yes, place value cards, and then you say, can you find 510? And then they'll look through all the cards and oh, where is it, where is it? Oh, there it is. Yay, good job. So you're gonna go down this list and these are all, you can modify them as needed. If your child knows the days and the months, you can skip that. Or you, you know what your child needs. That's why this doesn't give you exactly what to do. You can do all of this if you want, but if you need to shorten it and your child understands these things, you can skip it and modify it for your child. Um, so then here's, it com combines the base 10 cards I showed you with the place value cards. So you would set out the, this number and then they would find the base value cards to match that. So that worked really well. Then we move on here and then she, uh, you do some work with the abacus and the place value cards. And then they moved into the whole part, the part whole circle set. L looking about addition with the tens. And then you move into a worksheet. So that is a basic lesson. And that's basically exactly what you'll find in the A book as well, just um, the different concepts. And this is where we are now. We're doing coins. And this one's a cool game. So there you go. There's an all game. There's an all game. Very nice, buddy. So how many raisins did she eat yesterday? Five and five on this day. <laughs> she she ate 10 all together, right? Yay! Hey. Not 15. You're close. Fifth. You can count by 10s even, 56. ready? 56. 10, 10, 50, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50. That's right. So there you go. That's what Right Start Math looks like, and that's what you would be getting with when you purchase the curriculum. Um, and there's a peek at what my son and my daughter like to do when they use it. Thanks guys for watching. That is the first part of my Right Start Math review. You got to peek inside and see the manipulatives and see a sample lesson. Go ahead and click on the video right here and you can see my second part of this review where you hear my final thoughts on it. And you can see how I purchased this curriculum in an affordable way and maybe stick around towards the end for some outtakes, so. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.